A central vacuum doesn't have to be pulled or carried from room to room and up and down stairs. Its power unit, containing the motor and dirt receptacle, is mounted on a wall, usually in the basement or garage. This stationary unit connects to plastic ducts that run inside the walls to inlets in different parts of the home. You plug the attachment hose into the nearest inlet and the central power unit suctions the debris through the wall ducts. Being stationary, weight isn't an issue, therefore central vacuum motors are larger and more powerful than those in portable vacuum cleaners. The factory makes the main body of the power unit out of a steel sheet about a millimeter thick. A press punches out the openings required for the various components. A forming roller rounds the sheet into the unit's circular shape. They close the circle by tack welding a few key spots. Then they weld the entire length. This continuous seam makes the unit airtight for optimal suction and to prevent the collected dirt from escaping. They use the same material and technique to form the sides of the power unit's large dirt receptacle. Then a hydraulic press rolls the rim at the top, making the receptacle safe for the user to remove, empty, then put back in place. They make a rim on the bottom edge as well, sealing it over the bottom plate of the dirt receptacle. Then they put the power unit's main body on a hydraulic press and shape a rim that connects to the dirt receptacle. Next, they make a support for the motor and tack weld a mesh basket under it. The basket supports the vacuum cleaner's filter. The power unit's main body goes on top of the dirt receptacle. The motor support and filtration basket fit inside. And a cover goes on top. Now the unit gets a coat of high quality epoxy paint. The application system is electrostatic, meaning it charges the unit with a negative current and the powder paint particles with a positive one. This magnetically draws the particles onto the unit in an even layer. Then 45 minutes in an oven bakes it on for extra durability. They seal the connection between the dirt receptacle and the power unit main body. This must be airtight for two reasons. To prevent air from leaking through, which would lessen suction power, and to prevent collected dust from escaping. Next, they line the main body's motor compartment with soundproofing foam. An adhesive backing holds it against the compartment walls and dabs of liquid adhesive secure the corners. They install a filter on the outside to capture carbon dust. Carbon dust is a fine black dust which electrical motors emit. Now they apply decals bearing the series name and model number. They use a laser level to position them perfectly straight in just the right spot. Back to the motor compartment now. The electric motor sits on this rubber foam gasket and rubber legs, both of which absorb vibration. They also prevent metal-to-metal -metal contact between the motor and body, the secret to the vacuum's quiet operation. Whereas portable vacuum cleaners have a lightweight motor with a single fan, this motor is a large, heavy-duty, long-life steel motor with three fans. The electronic components go into the neighboring compartment, then workers use a variety of equipment to test suction, voltage and other specifications. They connect an LCD display on the outside, cap the compartments with a motor cooling insulated disc, then the unit's cover. The factory's lab selects a certain percentage of units at random for quality control testing. During operation, the LCD screens on both the power unit and hose handle display the power level. They also indicate when the unit needs technical maintenance, when to empty the dirt receptacle, and when to remove and wash the filters.